warm, warmly welcome. Yeah. Arunan, are you there? Ah, you want to be unmuted. Uh, Swanda, please. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's such an honor to be here, and I'm I'm both proud and excited to introduce Castori and his team as PharmLinks tries to really make drugs and capabilities in the public health system more accessible in Tanzania. It, it really has been a wonderful experience getting to know Castori and the team. Uh, it, even in the short time, they've had a chance to really explore multiple business models, sign their first customer, and all the while take a really strategic view to how they build their product and how they think about contributing back to the Tanzanian ecosystem. Uh, I think they'll be humble on their presentation. Um, so I'll just highlight that they are already a critical part of the conversation in public health. They have a voice in the room in drug access and in how Tanzania will digitize their health system. So uh, without further ado, uh, I hope you all enjoy hearing from Castorian team as much as I enjoyed working with them and uh, best of luck. Thank you, Mr. Arunant. Uh, welcome, Castori. Uh, it all started with a, with an observation from one of our co-founders when he was working at his auntie's pharmacy. She could see the assholes when her auntie when his aunt was making orders of medications. So my name is Kastori Munishi. Uh, I am from Farmlinks. So we want to address this challenge of people when they want to order medications to their drug stores. We want to make it as easy and fast as possible. So. I would like to take you through our presentation. So at Farmlinks, we are building an e-commerce platform that will connect drug stores, which are retail pharmacies, accredited drug dispensing outlets, uh, and, and wholesale pharmacies to, for, to conveniently, efficiently, and effectively purchase medications. And at Farmlinks, our purpose is to strengthen the healthcare system by increasing accessibility of medications. And by accessibility, we means that when we want to make sure that when someone wants medicines, they, are, they may be able to get, the, to get the medications at the right time and place. And as you can see in the picture, this is where it started. This is my, one of my co-founder, Frank, and his aunt. And this was the first time we were trying to demonstrate our product to his aunt. And she made our first order and she was really impressed by how the system works. And when we were doing the pilot a few months ago. And so the problem that we are addressing is the process of procuring medications in Tanzania is time consuming and unpredictable. Communication with suppliers is, uh, is unreliable because mainly it depends on the use of WhatsApp and phone calls. And also the current delivery method leads to delayed or incomplete orders that disrupt uh, retailer supplies of critical medications. And when retailers miss medications, it means the individual patients also miss medications when they go to purchase them in the, in the pharmacies. So at Farmlinks, we have built a, a centralized e-commerce platform to ensure that retail pharmacies are well stocked with medications in such a way that when a patient goes to uh, look for medication, they may always find the medications at these pharmacies. And we ensure that the process of ordering medications is easy, reliable, and fast. And this is the dashboard of a retailer. Uh, currently, we have uh, three wholesalers uh, registered, and we have more than 1,019 1, products. And when someone clicks on this, uh, they will see the products, and this is how they appear, and they can be able to uh, make their order. And on this part here, they can be able to track their order, whether it's pending, in process, or it's completed. And this is the wholesale dashboard. This is uh, just a sample of one wholesaler who has uh, 1,095 products and here you can see there are two orders that have been received by him and why right now uh, our solution is very relevant because in Tanzania currently there is no dominant online e-commerce platform for pharmaceuticals and also the Pharmacy Council which is the main regulatory body of 
uh, uh, of pharmaceuticals in Tanzania of all pharmacy practice has just created regulations of e-commerce for pharmaceutical products uh, in 2020. And luckily enough, I was part of people who were consulted to give ideas on how this uh, can be regulated, as well as the number of pharmacies in Tanzania is increasing at an average of 10 pharmacies per, per month. Uh, along with all these uh, developments, there is also an increasing number of internet subscribers in Tanzania. So internet usage is increasing rapidly and we have uh, more than 27 million internet subscribers and uh, the, the market that we are targeting is a very huge market. The volume of pharmaceutical imports in Tanzania, just to tell you, by 2015-2016, it was around 293 million US dollars. For now, it, the number might be much more and our potential customers that we are starting with are Dar es Salaam pharmacies and in Dar es Salaam just by 2018, there are more than uh, 520 retail pharmacies more than 2,000 adult stores and 100 wholesale pharmacies without counting the importers. This is information from the Pharmacy Council. And uh, in 2019, we worked with MSH, uh, which is Management Sciences for Health, to do a survey because they also wanted to do a similar project. And in the survey that we did in, in pharmacies in Dar es Salaam, uh, 73 reported to face challenges uh, that I, I mentioned earlier and 54.8% had uh, have had an idea of e-commerce meaning that they have had uh, they have heard of the possibility someone can order something online whether through uh, amazon or other similar kinds of services and also 74.2 of the pharmacies that we visited they had uh, a device that had interconnection internet connection whether it's a tablet it's a phone or it's a computer and also, after explaining what FarmLinks does and how it's going to address the challenges in the process of ordering medications, 90% of the pharmacies, they said that they will be ready to use our platform. And uh, our competition that we have currently is mobile phone and WhatsApp, because these are the two main methods or main digital methods that are used to purchase medications. But our key difference is that we have accuracy and we are making phone calls is cumbersome compared to when you have a digital platform or an application, you just need to click to make your order. And then you, uh, our other big strength is the data by keeping records and the data is going to be very game changing. And this is my, my some of the members of my team. Uh, we are around eight, but these are just representative. It's me, who I am a pharmacist from Wimbley University and a health data scientist. I also have Frank Arabi, who is a medical doctor. We have Daniel Yatu, our software developer in Latifa Tarimo, who is working as operational assistants. And then our, our milestones that we expect by the end of this year, because currently we are doing a pilot and it's giving us very insightful. So we expect by the end of this year to launch and, uh, and then cover the direct market. And then by 2023, we'll develop our logistic department and then we'll have more than 10,000 users. And then uh, by 2024, we expect to start uh, intensively uh, capitalizing in moving into other regions. And then we have like uh, uh, traction, traction currently we, through our, our model we of making custom solutions, we have made our first sale in February when we were doing uh, our pilot and we have made a sale of $2,173, which is around 5 million Tanzanian shillings to Focus Pharma Limited. And also FarmLink's team, we have been able to recruit three uh, wholesalers, as you saw, with more than 1,010 products. And also we have already have 12 retail pharmacies registered in our system. Uh, and also uh, we have potential for addressing public health challenges, like we were shortlisted. Uh, the data that we collect can be able to address issues like antimicrobial resistance. And also it can be used to, uh, to help in predicting pandemics through drug conception data. We have two business models, one as FarmLinks as a service and the other one of developing custom solutions. And then this our, our financial projection will start slowly, but as the number of uh, subscribers and the number of sales through commissions increases, our, our growth will be exponential. And then this is, we ask for uh, 300,000 US dollars for running the business until we become profitable in three years for 25% of equity. And as you can see, this is how we expect to spend it, mostly on the marketing side, logistics, operational costs, and research and development because we want to always be relevant. Then uh, you just have to save your time, leave stock refills to us, and we expect to be a game changer in the Tanzania market on the issue of pharmaceuticals. Thank you. 
Thank you, Castori. Thanks a lot for your good presentation. I would like to welcome the judges. Judges, you're welcome. Thank you, Castori. Very interesting presentation and concept. Um, this is a big issue across Africa um, that you are solving, um, providing a predictable, affordable, and verified uh, pharmaceuticals. Uh, could you could I ask you a little bit more about the uh, the marketplace uh, con the way you set it up? Um, is is it a, are you taking inventories? Do you hold inventory, or it's it's held by the wholesalers and then delivered from there directly to the to the uh, the pharmacies? As it starts, inventories will be held by the by the wholesaler pharmacy who has a pharmacy because of regulations. Uh, and uh, after that, as we grow, we'll have our own uh, warehouse as well. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, there is a time when we will be developing logistics uh, in the timeline. Uh, somewhere by 2023, when we are developing well, our logistics department, it means that we'll start to have our own warehouses so as to speed up the delivery process to be even more accurate. So currently, the stock will be on the wholesaler. All important. And how is the delivery and then the payment is done currently? Um, is it automated, a manual, and who, who is coordinating it all? Um, the current payment method is cash and delivery, but we are also working, uh, we approach the Budacom and Pesa so that we can have mobile form of payment. And then on the delivery side, who is taking care of it? Are you, um, have you linked up with some providers or is it the wholesaler delivering it directly? Whose responsibility is it to handle the delivery piece? The delivery, we have partnered with a, uh, with a company that offers the delivery service. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I want to. I have a lot of questions, but I make sure that the other judges have okay. a chance to ask as well. Jumana, you, you can have a you can have a question first. I think maybe you go. You, we go yes. first, Cameron, before Jumana. Thank okay. you. Yes. Um, so just around the, the logistics, um, and Anika touched on it, um, Kastori, um, and you mentioned that your competition is mobile phone and WhatsApp at the moment, but you know, if, if a big big brother, Amazon, decides to come in and, and with their logistical systems and, and, and that huge differentiator of theirs, you can either see them as, as competition or as, as you know, facilitator to help you. Have, you. have you thought about it from that point of view um, and, and, and how are you going to make your, your, your delivery or your fulfillment process you know, seamless and, and make it as easy as possible for both sides of your platform. So sorry, could you come again on Amazon? Okay, so if, if Amazon could be seen as a big competitor, if they decide to come into, into Tanzania, um, they could either be a big competitor or you could, you could get to use them as, as, as your fulfillment uh, partner. Um, have you thought about it? Have you given any idea? You know, any thought about somebody like that coming into the country? Yes, uh, we have thought about it, and that's why we also need to develop our logistics, not to be handled by a third party, uh, to handle logistics on our own. So, by that, that means that because pharmaceuticals are different from other kinds of products, one of the most important things is to uh, to get delivery vehicles. And then after getting the delivery vehicles, we'll need to uh, develop these delivery vehicles to be in a shape that they can be able to transport pharmaceuticals. And uh, and along in, uh, as well in that, for instance, when you have uh, like cold chain pharmaceuticals, they need very special conditions. So we, we want to develop our logistics department in such a way that we can even be able to handle this kind of cold chain uh, pharmaceuticals like hormones. For instance, like currently there is a big problem in Tanzania there is no uh, well integrated transportation system for uh, drugs like hormones. So that is one of the areas that we are, we are also targeting. So the key thing that we want to do is to have our own delivery people and delivery vehicles and also 
the mode of delivery will be integrated in the app in such a way that when an order is made from a retail side, the drivers will get notified that there is a, an order made from shop X. You need to pick it at this time and deliver to this shop at this time. Okay, great. And then you ask for three hundred thousand dollars for twenty five percent. How did you get to twenty five percent? You you're being very generous. Yes. <laughs> How did you get to twenty five percent? You're giving away a quarter of your business for three hundred thousand dollars. You know, when you've expanded into the rest of Africa and you've got a business that's worth a billion dollars and, you know, into Southeast Asia, et cetera, and giving away 25% for $300,000, you're not going to be too happy with yourself in 10 years' time. I see Min, he's, straight, he's nodding his head in the vigorous agreement with me. <laughs> I think you just need to look at that, um, that number over there, um, uh, story, because you, that's, you know, it's very difficult to value your business at the moment. It's still a very... Um, uh, early stage business and 25% is just way too much at this stage. So you need, you need to look at that, that number going forward. Okay. Just some okay. advice. Okay, cool. Yeah, I agree. I agree, Cameron. Castori, we always say, and now I'm speaking anti investor, we always say give as little as possible, uh, possible away in the early stages because you have one chance at it. Um, my, my uh, concern or my question was exactly as to the other two judges. Um, we find this with many marketplace businesses. The, the marketplace in terms of the tech is easier than the logistics. And then the question always comes three to five years in, what are you now, a marketplace or a logistics company or both? And the resources that it will take from you um, in terms of how you will um, you will stock it with 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 people with money, it, it it's it's a massive 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 job, and I'm sure you know that. But my advice would really just be to consider that long term, and uh, baby steps are sometimes better than big steps. So that's really a comment more than a question. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Carry on, Zwanda, please. Um, I wanted to mention that we have a body break coming up. I know that we are running three minutes behind time, but um, if possible, if we can be back um, 40 minutes after the hour, wherever you are in the world, that would be great. Thank you, Zwanda. Maybe we, we write it on the chat as well. 